What's good? Welcome to another smoke box, courtesy of BeReal.tv. I got my man, Bishop Magic Don Juan in here, man. Hey, it's always a treat when players meet. We in the box, Jack. It's good to have you in here, man. Hey, man, I'm glad to be in the box with you, Be Real, because you're so real, just like your name, man. It's an honor and a pleasure to be around you. Man, you got it going on, man. Your show just cracking, Jack. Thank you very much. Now, you know, we've been friends a long time. And uh, you can fire it up if you want. Okay, I'm gonna have to use your lighter right now. There you go. Can't find mine. We've been friends a long time, so we've been, you know, running in the same circles with Snoop Dogg and yeah, all that. Yeah, interacting on a lot of different things. You know, when every time I see you, I always think about the first time we did uh, the live video thing together. You know, at the, uh, what is it, Crazy Horse up in Hollywood? Crazy, yeah, you know. We, we've we been knowing each other for a long time. We met at a Luke Skywalker party in Chicago. Right. That was before you was getting down with right. Snoop. Right, that's right. You know, that was a crazy party. Yeah, but that was live though. You know how Luke had it going on from the very beginning, man. He was just, wow. I yeah. mean, it was off the hook, for yeah. real. It was, yeah, it was really off the hook. Well, <laughs> you know, I, I figured that had to be some kind of effect on you for your music and your career, you know, by out there on the road with Luke, you know, being able to see some of that raw happening, yeah. you know? I mean, you you know, you heard about it. You heard about it through everywhere, you know what I'm saying? Because he was on the news and shit all over the place for what he was saying and, and obviously what he was doing. So. Yeah, the freedom of speech thing, that was, that was really cool. I mean, I know, you know, you, you know, as an artist and thing, you know, you had to think about that because, you, you know, through your music, you speak your truth, you yeah. know? That's right. Everybody got their way of expressing their art or, you know, whatever, whatever it is, you know, yeah. artistically, you know what I'm saying? I'm glad it came down to where the Supreme Court, you know, decided it was a freedom of speech sort of thing. Yeah. And then, you know, you got to think now, here it is all them years later, you know, they got it all going on. They just, you know what I mean? Everything being said and shown. Yeah. You know? So what was your introduction to the game, you know? Well, my introduction to the gang is, you know, like being a little kid sitting on the porch, you know what I mean, watching, uh, you know, like I said, I didn't live next door to no doctor or lawyer or anything like that. I live next door to a dope dealer or a pimp or a player. So every day I'm sitting on the porch, I'm watching this guy come out, you know, getting in a big fine Cadillac, got two, three girls, clothes, gear on. I'm sitting there, hey, I want to be like that. You know, that was my desire. Yeah, you know, you, you're, you're influenced by your surroundings. You know what I'm saying? You come up around gangsters, you want to be a gangster. You That's come up right. around hustlers, you, you want to be a hustler. You come up around rappers, you want to be a rapper. That's right. You know, and, and so you was affected by everything you were seeing at that time. At that time. But, you know, just like you say, you're affected by a certain thing, but it don't mean that's your nick. Right. You know what I mean? But here it is to me, you know, some, you know, 30 years later. You know what I mean? So it definitely was my nick. You know, I used to see this big pimp and run behind his car and everything. And then one day we become best friends. I'd have never imagined that. Right. So obviously some of that was meant to be. But, you know, during all that time I had the little uh, conversion, you know, where God came into my right. life. You know, I started preaching, gave up the street life as for the girls on the street and you know, uh, that was a big change. Yeah, that was a big change. You know, like I was, you know, number one pimp in the country. I had no idea. So that'd be like if I stopped smoking weed. That's crazy. Yeah. And that's cold. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's that kind of thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you know, so you know, the transformation was amazing. You know, and like I said, you know, people can't understand it. Let me hit that lighter with you. People can't understand it. You know what I mean? Because you know street life and they always think things is game you know but yeah. like i said if it not happened i'd have never said it you know what i mean because i was happy being a pimp i had no problem still had girls still checking trap getting it out of both draw legs come on i was down <laughs> <laughs> but Damn you it. but you felt something some you needed to change somewhere and that's what made you you know shift things around it was you know like i said that uh conversion it was definitely a spiritual conversion man like i said when i didn't believe in god i said i didn't believe but once he showed me experience to know that he really do exist i'm stuck man like crazy glue and it's been a good change for my life you know like people figure oh you go to the church you ain't gonna do this you ain't gonna do that but what it do it mellows you out 
right. you know, give you a chance to relax, man, because, you know, how we, like you were saying earlier, we were speaking, man, going seven years nonstop at the Rainbow, smoking on tour, drinking, this, you know what I mean? Thinking about all the fun and everything, and, you know, it's good that you realized it at an early age to be able to catch it, you know, to get yourself in a more physical, and that'll keep you going longer. Right, right. You know, you got to make changes that are right for you when it's time to make them. You know, you got to recognize it, right? That's right. That's right. And, and and it's good when you can. You know, even like you still a young man, you'll be saying, man, forget that. I'm drinking 40 pops a day. I'm going to knock down 20 Henderson and things like that. But you got a true understanding because, like I said, you got a family and you want to see your kids raised. That's you know? right. Yeah. Yeah, that's important. Now, I mean... Obviously, a lot of people caught on to you through the movies and stuff <coughs> like that, the documentaries and stuff like that. But I think what really put you over the top was was your relationship with Snoop Dogg, where you know he, he you came on as a mentor. You know what I mean? I think that was a big move on on both y'all's behalfs. You know, how how did y'all how did y'all hook up? And, 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 and connect in the first place. Well, you know, now that, you know, on some spiritual stuff, you know, I believe now that everything is meant to be that happened. You know, stuff was laid down from the beginning of time. Me and Snoop met in Chicago. I was out in the audience. He told Uncle Jumbo, somebody to go out there and get me. Came in the back, gave him a joint from then on. You know how it is, you get yep. a joint, feel, feel right in love from then on. Right. He said, <laughs> if you ever come, you know, and that was in the 90s. And he said, if you ever come to California, you know, we're going to do this and we're going to do that. You know, I came several times uh, to like the Soul Train Award when he was receiving his first ever award, you know, things like that. And so once I got here, it just like, you know, been there, done that, you know what I mean? You know, like the rappers and just like anybody, you know, fascinated with the pimp gang. And so to have the opportunity this, you know, bump shoulders with the, you know what I mean, number yeah. one man, it, it was a thrill for Snoop, you know what I mean? And, you know, I was just laying down the gang, and it, and it gave him, and it, it worked for both of us. It worked because, for both, yeah. Yeah, because, you know, it mm -hmm. brought him off of that gangster kind of thing that he said it saved his life. Cause that. At, right, because at the time, you know what I mean? He turned, it, he turned from a gangster to a boss, like a player. That's right, yeah, the player, you know what I mean? So it took some of that static off, and then, you know, like, he called a case where he had to drop all the people he was hanging with, so yeah. that gave him some relief too, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, it, it was a pattern kind of thing, step by step, and I, you know, I just stood tall with him, you know what I mean? I figured it was what I was supposed to do, so wherever he was, I was there for him, whatever I need to do, so. It's a lifelong connection, pretty much, you know what I'm saying? Yes, it is, and then to hear somebody, you know, of his caliber, and it's all in, you know, uh, the magazine saying that, you know, you saved Snoop Dogg life. And you know, that in itself- That's it, a big deal. That's a big deal, you know what I mean? So that's amazing. You know, at the time, you know, all the Suge Knight stuff was going on. People was dying, things was happening. And Snoop said himself, it was I don't up. wanna die. Nah. You know what I mean? He had too much good shit going on, as he does today. Shout out to Snoop Dogg. One time, GGN, champ. you know what I'm saying? He was up in here, you know, we did it big in here. Mm. You know, blazing like champions as we do. Well, see, that's a beautiful thing because, see, no matter how it is, when the connection is right, you know, God brings that unity, you know what I mean? Because every time we come somewhere, just like you and him had a, a DJ gig together, you yeah. did a set, he did a set, you know what I mean? Things be worked out what's meant to be, you know? Right. Yeah, and so, you know, it's been a good relationship with you as well as with Snoop. You know, I enjoy the ride, you know. I'm thankful, I'm grateful. I take nothing for granted. I say what I mean, I mean what I say. You know, I'm one of the players that keep it real. Y'all might say it real, but I know how to keep it real. And the reason I do it is because I learned that I am a servant. I come to serve, so I'll serve you. You know, I don't mind serving. It don't make me seem small. And see, that's my thing with Snoop. Because, you know, I don't mind. We go on tour, Snoop laying there, sleep cold. I go get some cover and put it over him. You know what I mean? I know he need that in his life. Right. You know what I mean? So that's what I said. Once people realize that they not here to be served, but they here to serve, they gonna have a much better life. That's right. That way they won't be looking for everybody to serve them. They'll be trying to serve. And you get blessed at serving others. That's right. And you uh you be doing you, you do a show now as well, right? You do your own show. Um 
pretty much uh yeah i got a radio tv show yeah. you know we do a live broadcast As a matter of fact i did it I, we you. had you on there that was that's one of our great shows we're doing uh the don juan radio tv show greatest hits right now and one of the shows that we did together is included in that greatest right hit. On. and we go every friday night from uh 10 to 11 30 on rmc uh, on live.com and we have different guests we do interviews I play dusty music you know I'm one of them old school I still like the Motown sound you know yeah yeah and we you know we interview different guests we like I said we had you Weird, Snoop Too Short uh Curtis Blow Bill Duke doing it big uh, as a matter of fact we just had Jermaine Jackson and tonight we got Aaron Hall Nice. You know, ooh, new Jack Swing I'll on try the to tell Yeah, you. <laughs> it's going down tonight, man. See, I'm you, telling you, the box is live in here, man. I can dig this. Right? In the old school, you know what I'm saying? Now, now, I know a lot of people are watching. They're saying he's t he's hitting it through his nose. That's what you call a charge, right? Oh, yeah. no, that's not necessarily a charge, but. Yeah, yeah, it that's, is a but that, yeah, that's the way the charge go, you know what I mean? Yeah. As, as we blow it, you know. But uh, it's one of the things that I do because it's. Uh, spiritual to me i made a promise to god that i wouldn't smoke like this with my lips no more and i'm trying to be honest and right. faithful to what i said to god and continue to do it that way instead of like i said i wouldn't do let me ask you this when you used to smoke it through your lips which way does it get you higher through your, you know when you smoked it through your lips or charging it through your nose hey man i wish i'd have started off smoking with my nose jack I, you know what I mean? That's a great hit. That's the best. Because see, one thing about it, when you smoke weed, is to go to the head. So when you it, do it, it from the, the nose, head. it yeah. goes straight to the head. When you do it from the mouth, it got to travel through your lungs and then come on up to your brain. I shoot it dead to the brain. That is true. Let me show them again. One. Your, right. your, your, your views out there yeah, looking right see, now? Here, yeah, for all y'all that want to hit one time for y'all. Now that's some real California Kush, Jack. <laughs> you did right. so y'all enjoy that you did have come, that ain't it we coming from the box here and i drink to that for my players cup you know we got devin the glass lady she didn't move to hollywood now oh, she did yeah man so now they can get their cup from her she got a thing on my show called uh issues where she do like three to five minutes you know about issues and everything you know so we got it going on she over got there, great man. she makes great cups mm -hmm. i got two they both, you know, slamming. I know that that's got to be one of them, right? You know what I was just telling you, and the thing about it, no matter how many she make, they never look the same. They never look the same. That's that's a, that's amazing about that lady. I said, wow, that is really something, you know. What's what's your favorite strain you like to smoke? I like OG Kush. OG Kush. Yeah, they were telling me they're gonna make a strain after me. Then I'll be liking the Bishop's Kush. You know, they said they were going to do a strain, though. But I like that OG, you know. I, I And, you know, I do blunt. You know, I know everybody keep changing. I can't keep up with you young players. I started off with blunt, uh, with a uh, whiteboard, them paper zigzag, yeah. way back in the 70s. See, I've been smoking since I was 12. That's a lot. Yeah, that's a long time ago. <laughs> you know what I mean? Word I up. was smoking when weed was $75 a pound. Jesus. You know, that's crazy. <laughs> that was before it become Colombo and Kush and everything else. Oh it was God. just some weed off Imagine a brick. That. You know. Imagine that. <laughs> 75 <know>? pounds. <laughs> yeah, that was, man, it was up, man. And then, you know, now after the year the weed didn't really change. I mean, different levels and now that we found that it's medical. Because really now, you know, I had some bad condition. I had blood clots. I was in the hospital getting pains and stuff. But I smoked this marijuana, man, and it's a relief to my body. Hmm. You know, so, you and, know. And, and that's what it is. You know, a lot of people use it for medicinal reasons, not just to like, you know, get a head change and whatnot. They use it therapeutically as well, you know. Yeah, they always say, you, you know, you can get a head bang and get healed at the same time. That's right, double, <laughs> double, <laughs> double for double, you know what I'm saying? That's right, hey, double I want, your pleasure. I want to thank my man Bishop <laughs> for jumping in the smoke box and, you know, always welcome to come back. We got to do a part two. You know what I'm saying? Hey, man, ain't nothing like riding in the OG old school. Because I remember the day when I used to pimp out of one of these. You <laughs> did. Had a three chicks in the back, you did. And the main chick in the front and be riding with a gangster lean with diamond in the back and a sunroof top. And it, it, the color would be green, though. Green for the money and gold for the honey. That's, then you dig it. That's right, man. 
peace out make sure you subscribe to the channel leave comments and make sure you check out the bishop show you know what i'm saying it's a banging show you got great guests and uh always good topics man peace the fuck out from the smoke box we're high you heard <laughs>